Hybridization is an extension of the valence bond theory. In valence bond theory, atomic orbitals, one on each atom, overlap to form a bond. In hybridization, on the other hand, before one overlaps orbitals, one forms hybrid orbitals on an atom by combining atomic orbitals. And then those hybrid orbitals on the atom overlap other hybrid orbitals or atomic orbitals on another atom to form a chemical bond. So atomic orbitals are hybridized in hybridization. It's still valence bond theory in the sense that orbitals on different atoms, and now we're including not only atomic but hybrid orbitals, orbitals on different atoms overlap to form a bond. Now where did this come about? Well, it was driven by the need to justify structure with orbital shapes. And the idea of hybridization was thought up by Linus Pauling in the 1930s. Let's take a, a look at uh, that. Let's look at, say, uh, CH4, the CH4 molecule. So the atomic configuration of carbon is 1s2, and here we have a 2s2 and a 2p2. Or if we look at it in terms of energy levels, we'll have something like this, 1s, 2s, 2p. So we have two electrons in the 1s, two in the 2s, and one each in the 1p. Now if you look at hydrogen, hydrogen, the atomic configuration there is 1s1, so drawing that, for the 1s we just have one electron. So if you look at these in terms of just strict valence bond theory, it looks like there's an orbital with just one electron in it, and here's an orbital with one electron in it. So it would look like the 1s would form uh, with the p, that overlap would be orbital overlap, and then you would have maybe another h to overlap with this p orbital, and so in the end you'd have CH2, and it would probably be somewhat uh, linear or actually angular because these two p orbitals would be perpendicular. So the structure of CH2, if we just look at VB valence bond theory only, we would expect, for instance, CH2, where the C, the H here would be a overlap of the 1s on the hydrogen and the 2p here, and the other p would be up here. This would be 90 degrees. In fact, we know that the CH4 is tetrahedral, that each H points, or each CH bond points to the corner of a tetrahedral. So using valence bond only, it doesn't look like you get the right geometry or even the right empirical formula. So Linus Pauling said, well, what we're going to do is to combine atomic orbitals first on the carbon before we actually do the valence bond overlap. So again, let's look at the carbon electronic structure here. It's 1s2, 2, two oh, I use the eraser function, yay, there we go, 2s2 and 2p2. So here we go, carbon. Let's look here just at the valence electrons. So this would be 2s, this would be 2p. We'll ignore these core electrons. And we'll put two electrons there, one electron there, and one electron there. What Linus Pauling said was let's hybridize these to form four equal orbitals, each with one electron in it. OK, so we hybridize those. We have now four electrons, we put those in each one of these equal ones, and now, look at this, we can have bonding with this orbital, and this orbital, and this orbital, and this orbital. So that when we look at, say, the hydrogen, again with this 1s1, ah, there's the 1s, and there's an electron here, so the hydrogen can overlap there to form that. Each one of those hybrid p orbitals now can overlap. So the bonding in CH4, would be described as, in the valence bond hybridization model, this bond will be described as an overlap of a hybrid, and this will be called an sp3 hybrid orbital. So there are one, two, three, four sp3 hybrid orbitals. One, two, three, four. And each hybrid orbital is equivalent, points to the corner of a tetrahedron. Overlap of hybrid sp3 orbitals on carbon with an atomic 1s orbital on hydrogen. 
So that's what the valence bond theory is, is overlap of orbitals. But instead of having an atomic orbital on carbon, we have hybrid orbitals. So first you hybridize, then you overlap in the hybridization valence bond theory. Now, hybrid orbitals, we said, was formed by combination of atomic orbitals, a single atom. And you have equivalent orbitals, but they're in different spatial orientation. For example, sp3 considered, what we, get, what we can do is add up all the s and p orbitals, or we can add the s and subtract off the p's, or various combinations here. And each one of these gives an equivalent orbital, and spatially it's pointed in the corners of a tetrahedron. You just can't willy-nilly add orbitals. You have to have symmetry to be maintained, and we'll talk more about that later in the course in another lecture. But symmetry is used to get the rational combination of atomic orbitals in order to get the hybrid orbitals, and the hybrid orbitals then uh, overlap in the valence bond theory. Now let's look at an example. Use valence bond theory in hybridization to describe the bonding in trichloroethylene or trichloroethene. First let's draw the structure. Structure, double bond C, and we got a chlorine up here. Here we have a hydrogen, here we have a chlorine, and a chlorine. So let's try to describe the bonding. We already looked at the atomic configuration of carbon and hydrogen. For chlorine, again looking just at valence electrons, for chlorine we have 2s2, so two electrons here, and we have five electrons in the p orbitals. Okay, So it looks like this p orbital here is going to overlap in for any of these carbon orbitals. And why don't you hybridize the chlorine? Well, for terminal atoms, you don't need hybridization to explain any kind of structure. So usually you don't hybridize orbitals in terminal atoms. This carbon, remember from organic chemistry or from introductory chemistry, we might recognize that this carbon to be an sp2 hybrid which means that we've taken one s orbital and two p orbitals and hybridized them. So this carbon now has three hybrid orbitals pointing to the corners of an equilateral triangle, one there, one there, one there. So this means that this bond here can be described as an overlap of a hybrid sp2 on carbon with a atomic 2p orbital on chlorine. There's that atomic 2p orbital that sticks out there. The sp2 hybrid, here's the sp2 hybrid, here's the atomic p orbital there on chlorine. That overlap forms the bond. Let's look at this one down here. There's an sp hybrid coming out of this carbon. So the bond there would be described as an overlap of an sp2 hybrid on carbon with an atomic, remember hydrogen has 1s, so atomic 1s on hydrogen. And this chlorine carbon bond would be the same thing as this one here, overlap of hybrid sp2 on carbon with atomic 2p on chlorine and so on. And then let's look at one of these bonds. So here we have a carbon sp2 hybrid coming out of here and there'd be an sp2 hybrid coming out of there. So that bond would be described as an overlap of an sp2 hybrid on that carbon with an sp2 hybrid on carbon. So this is a hybrid hybrid overlap, valence bond overlap. So that takes care of one of these two bonds here, but there's another bond and how do we describe that one using the valence bond hybridization theory? Well, remember, in order to form the sp2 hybrids on these carbons, what you had to do was to use two of the p orbitals, but there's a p orbital left over. That p orbital left over is an atomic p orbital. So that bond, you have an atomic p orbital on carbon, an atomic p orbital on carbon. So that bond would be described as an overlap of the atomic p on carbon with atomic P on carbon. So that's how you just use the hybridization and valence bond theory to qualitatively describe the bonding in trichloroethene. 
And as we said, we'll talk more about hybridization and combination of atomic orbitals to form hybrid orbitals. And later on in the course, we have to use then uh, symmetry. We have to consider symmetry in order to get a rational combination of atomic orbitals. Okay, so that's hybridization.